Today, we're going to be exploring the fundamentals of formula fields in QuickBase. For those of you who may be unfamiliar with them, formula fields allow you to make multiple fields interact in your application automatically, heavily reducing the time spent entering data and minimizing any data entry errors. However, many QuickBase users may find them confusing or intimidating, as they are more on the coding side of low-code, no-code. If that has been a roadblock for you, you're in the right place. This video will provide you with the foundational knowledge you need to start confidently using formula fields. We'll be covering many of the fundamentals, so if you are looking for something specific, feel free to use the timestamps in the description to skip directly to the section you need. Let's cover how to create a formula field. Go to the table you would like to create a field in, and then, Go to the Settings gear. Now, go to Fields. Next, click the New Fields button on the top right. Now, we are presented with a new field dialog. From here, we can create as many different fields as we want. You can type in the name of your field on the left side. Then, you can type in Formula on the right side to get a list of different types of formula fields. We'll cover the different data types later in this video. You should try to select the correct formula type. However, you can change the type of the field later if needed. After you have the name and the type, you can click Add Fields. You can now navigate to the field in the list or search for it. First, you can go to the fields of the table. Find the field you're trying to edit on the field list and click it. Alternatively, if your field is on a form, you can right click it on the form and click Edit Field Properties. Now you should be staring at the field properties. Here we can edit the formula using the Formula Editor. Before we continue explaining how to make formulas, we need to lay out some foundational knowledge about formulas themselves. There are two basic parts to a formula, data and functions. Data is arguably the most crucial part of a formula, as it allows us to transform data from other fields into something else. There are different types of data. Mostly, these types are reflected with field types. The common types are text, numeric, date, date time, duration, checkbox, user, text list, and user list. There are more types than just these, but these are the most commonly used types. Functions are predefined ways to transform data. You can think of them like the functions on a calculator. An example is the sum function. You can plug data into the sum function and it will try to sum the data together. However, the sum function can only be used on number types and duration types. So, if you want to sum two things together, they must both be the correct types. Fields will output their type in data. For example, a date field will output date type data. So, if you want to use dates in a formula, you should place those dates in date fields and create a formula date field. You can also create data without fields. These are called literals, or sometimes constants. Here are two examples of literals. If you had a numeric formula and wanted to multiply it by 10, you could do 10 times field. Here, 10 is a literal. If you wanted a text formula to display hello before the field, you could do hello ampersand field. Here, hello is a literal. Take note that text literals have double quotes surrounding them. Text literals have a special name called a string. You may commonly hear them referred to as a string or string literal. Sometimes, you may need to convert some data from one type to another. This is called a type conversion. There are specific functions that will convert data, called type conversion functions. 
You can find them in the formula function dialog, which will be covered in a later section. For example, let's say that you had a text field with dates in it and wanted to convert it to date data in order to manipulate it with other date functions. You would type to date project start date. This will convert the project start dates data into date type data. You will commonly get errors for having the incorrect data type, so type conversions are essential. Most data types use the basic math operations addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. However, text does not use these operations. You can combine two pieces of text or strings with an ampersand. Other operations on text are done by using functions. Now that we know about data types, let's say that you had a text formula that you wanted to be a numeric formula. Here's how we can change it. First, go to the field's properties. Now, we can click the Change Type link. Now, we can select the new field type. You should remember to read the caution. Changing field types can be dangerous. Typically, changing from a formula type to another formula type is not that dangerous. However, changing from a non-formula type to a formula type will wipe out the data in that field, which could be a disaster. Sometimes it is better to create a new field. Let's select the formula numeric type and then press change type. Now the type is changed. We can see that the formula is giving us an error. This error occurs because it used to put out text, but now it wants to output numeric. Let's try to modify the formula to output numeric. In this case, we had a formula that took another numeric field, multiplied it by two, and added a string to the end. To make this back to numeric, we need to remove the string portion. Now we're all set to save. When using a function, you will usually have to supply the function with some data. The data a function wants you to use are called the parameters to the function. An example is that the days function has one parameter, which is number n. When you are typing the function and your data in, the data is then called an argument in respect to the function. When I type days, amount of days, Amount of days is an argument. When a function has multiple parameters, you must put commas in between your arguments for the function. If that terminology is confusing, don't worry. The terms themselves are unimportant to actually writing formulas, and many users use the two interchangeably. If you call your arguments parameters, or vice versa, a majority of formula writers will understand what you mean. The takeaway should be that functions want to be supplied data, and if it is multiple bits of data, put commas between them. Additionally, some functions can have unlimited arguments passed into them. This is typically denoted by QuickBase using an ellipsis in the parameters. An example is the sum function where sum number n ellipsis. You can put as many numeric arguments as you need to for this type of function. We'll focus on a special group of functions that will come up a lot. Conditionals. Conditional functions are functions that will spit out different results based on the condition that they are supplied with. The most commonly used one is an if condition. An if condition is the most simple conditional and the perfect example to start with. In the most basic terms, an if condition will change its output to one of two things depending on the condition. 
A real-life example may be something like, if it is Wednesday, go to the grocery store. Otherwise, go home. The, if it is Wednesday, is our condition. Going to the grocery store is our true option, and going home is our false option. In QuickBase, it would be written like this. If day of week is equal to Wednesday, groceries, home. The if condition allows you to chain many conditions together. Using the last example, let's add, if it is Thursday, go get gas. It would look like this. If day of week is equal to Wednesday, groceries. Day of week is equal to Thursday, gas, home. The very last output of an if condition is the else output, which is given when none of the prior conditions were met. If you don't supply the else, in this case, if we removed home, the if condition will end up outputting nothing if none of the conditions are met. Logical operators are parts of a conditional that allow you to chain multiple conditions together or change their behavior. There are several different types of logical operators, however, we will focus on three that will be useful in normal use. For the other logical operators, we will include a link to them down in the description. First, we have AND. AND allows us to group two conditions together and check if they both evaluate to true. A common use of this may be checking if a number is in a range. For example, if we needed to check if invoice amount was between 100 and 200, we could write invoice amount greater than equal to 100 and invoice amount less than equal to 200. Next, we have OR. OR allows us to group two conditions together and check if either one of them evaluates to true. A common use of this may be checking if something is one of two values. For example, if we needed to check if the day of week is either Thursday or Friday, then you could write day of week equals Thursday or day of week equals Friday. Lastly, we have not. Not will flip the truth value of the condition it is in front of. For example, if we wanted to check day of week was any day except for Thursday, you could write not day of week equals Thursday. If you have a field or a function you want to add somewhere in your formula, there are three main ways to do it. First, you can simply type the name of the field or function in. This is easiest when you know the exact name of the field or function and the name is short. If you are adding a field, you will have to type in square brackets around the name. If it is a function, you will have to type in parentheses after the function's name and then supply it arguments, if applicable. Second, you can use the context menu. To do this, you will have to use the shortcut control space. If this doesn't work, Type a space first. Now, you can start to type in a field's name or function, and it will filter the context list. You can choose a field or function from the list with your arrow keys, and select a field by pressing Enter. If you choose a function, it will output placeholder text for the arguments in the function. You will have to delete them. The third and last way is using the Choose Fields and Functions dropdown. This dropdown will either be to the right or underneath the editor, depending on how large the editor is on your screen. When you open the dropdown, you can find fields in the search. At the top of the dropdown, you can also open up the Formula Function dialog, which will present you with a comprehensive list of all functions, along with their parameters, descriptions, and examples. 
variables are an interesting topic in QuickBase formulas, as they are technically not needed at all. Using QuickBase variables is like organizing your room. Sure, you could leave everything spread out across the room. However, organizing and compartmentalizing will make your room look much cleaner and easier to use. Variables' main purpose is just that, to organize and compact your formula into a more readable state. We should try to use variables whenever we see something repeated in the formula more than two times. For example, let's say you have a formula meant to check the month based on a date in text, and the output is the name of the month. A formula without variables would look like this. As you can see, we have to repeat the month to date project start date 11 times. That's a lot of typing, and in some formulas, you may have to change the way you are getting this data. So you'll end up changing it 11 times. Instead, using a variable, we can type it like this. Now we only have to type the calculation a single time and just reuse the variable. If we ever need to change the calculation, we also only have to change it in one spot. This will keep you from creating messy formulas. To declare a variable, you need to type in var preceded by the data type, and then the name of the variable. Some variable names are not allowed because they are the same name as a data type or a function. For example, you cannot name a variable month because month is the name of a function. You will then type equals and write out what your variable should be equal to. You will then end the variable with a semicolon. To use the variable in your formula, you will type a dollar symbol, then the variable's name. There are many ways to use variables to enhance your formulas and make them easier to read. It is always a good idea to consider readability of your formulas. When you open up a formula two years down the line, you will thank yourself. If you need to leave yourself a note in the formula, you can use a comment. To start a comment, Type two forward slashes. The comment will automatically end on the next line. We encourage you to use comments as much as possible to explain what your formula does, so that when you or someone else looks at it in the future, they don't have to guess at what it does.